The wall construction library holds information on the default and custom wall assemblies, as well as their associated installation options. It allows you to create new custom wall assemblies, edit and delete existing ones, and select what assemblies you would like visible in the data grid. The view is split into two main sections, the library which shows all the various assemblies in their groups, and the table view which shows the wall assembly and insulation option currently selected in the library. The library shows all the various wall assemblies that have been either custom created by the user as well as the hero default walls. The library is arranged in a tree view under groups such as weatherboard, brick veneer, rammed earth and so forth. Each assembly belongs to one of these groups. Each assembly also has a list of its various insulation options. These insulation options are what can be selected for the walls using this assembly within the data grid insulation column. Assemblies generally have several insulation options such as for different insulation thicknesses, materials or air gaps. Users can create and edit different insulation options within the table view. There are several features available to assist in organising and searching the library. You can use the filter text field to search for a specific wall assembly on its code or name. The library tree can be expanded or collapsed by using the expand collapse buttons or individually by double clicking the row you would like to expand or collapse. The checkboxes on each assembly determine whether that assembly will be shown as an available option within the construction combo box in the wall data grid tab. For example, in the project shown, the only walls selected within the library are a fibre cement, metal clad and internal wall type. We can then see within the wall data grid construction column only these assembly types are available for selection. This feature is a useful way to filter the number of options in the data grid to make selection easier and avoid confusion. Note that you cannot unselect a wall that is in current use in a project. The option Hide Unselected Assemblies at the top of the library view toggles the library from showing all assemblies, including those unselected, versus showing only selected ones. You can use this option to again reduce the number of options visible within the library. The Select All Assemblies option will check all wall assemblies and show them all. Conversely, you can clear the selection by using the Clear All button and start selecting your desired walls again. All new custom assemblies are created by copying in an existing one. Choose an assembly within a group that your new custom assembly will become a part of and hit the Copy button or keyboard shortcut Ctrl C. The new assembly will have been created as a copy of the original assembly and you can now customise the assembly further within the table view. Custom or user created walls are visually differentiated from the default walls by having italic text. Insulation options can also be copied from the library, however they will also be copied and created just when editing the insulation within the table view, which can be a faster way to customise them. Custom assemblies can be deleted by using the delete button at the top of the library or keyboard shortcut delete noting that default hero assemblies or walls in current use within the project cannot be deleted. Custom insulation options can also be deleted by using the same button or keyboard shortcut. The table view shows a detailed view of the assembly in terms of its materials list as well as allowing the assembly to be edited and customised further. The selected item in the library is the wall that will be shown in the table view. If the assembly itself is selected in the library, the wall will be shown using its default insulation option. Or if you select a specific insulation option in the library, the assembly will be shown with this insulation applied. Custom walls can have their code, which represents the short version of their name, or their name changed within the text fields at the top of the table view. The materials are shown from top to bottom, from the most external facing material to the most internal. If the assembly is used on an internal wall, an arrow is shown on the wall in the visual view which points towards the external face of the assembly and can be reversed by clicking that direction arrow. See the wall tutorial videos for further details. The table has various columns showing the name of the material, its type, whether it's a vented air gap and its R value and you can also optionally toggle the visibility of the thermal conductivity column if required. The table view allows you to customise and edit the assembly in various ways. 
Note, changing any attribute of a default wall assembly will ask you if you would like to create a custom assembly copy of that default first. The specific materials of an assembly can be changed in several ways. You can change an existing material by using the drop down combo box under each material's name, or if you would like to add a material into the assembly, you can drag a material from the add material row at the bottom of the view. The material that will be added can be changed either after it's been added or you can pre-select the material that would be added. Alternatively, pressing the plus button will add the material at the selected row. Materials can also be moved around in assembly by drag and dropping the row. You can delete a material within a custom assembly by using the delete button shown when hovering over the row or selecting the row and using the keyboard shortcut delete. If you delete a material from the current insulation option, a new insulation option will be created with this material removed. Several materials have types which further describe them. These include concrete blocks which have various subtypes including their density, lightweight or dense weight, their structural coring, unfilled, filled at centres, completely filled or solid. Insulation materials also have a type which describes the material type of that insulation such as fibreglass, EPS, foam, etc. These various insulation types will have slight effects on thickness and thermal conductivity of that insulation material. An air gap also has a type which describes the reflectivity or emissivity of that air gap. Air gaps are also the only material that use the vented checkbox column within the table, which describes whether their air gap is ventilated or not, as per standard modelling practice. The thickness of the material can be changed in the thickness column. This will typically improve the R value of the material. Note the thickness of an air gap is also important to enter to model the correct fixed R value for that air gap. Hero handles insulation and air gap materials slightly differently from standard materials within the assembly. You can ins insert these materials into an assembly either as base materials or as an insulation option material itself. Base materials are modelled in the assembly regardless of the selected insulation from the wall data grid, while a material selected as an insulation option only gets added if that option is selected as the wall insulation in the wall data grid. You can see this difference in the Hero default assemblies which have air gap cavities behind their cladding material, such as for brick veneer walls. In the Hero default brick veneer wall with a reflective air gap, the reflective air gap, which is just behind the brick, is inserted or configured as a base material in that it does not belong to any of the insulation options, it's simply applied similar to brick into the assembly regardless of what insulation option is selected. For example, let's say we had a custom fibre cement assembly shown here initially as just fibre cement layer an insulation layer, which you can see is where the various insulation options typically are located for that assembly, and then the plasterboard internal surface. If we wanted to add an air gap on the outside of the stud wall in this assembly, such as if we were changing from a direct fix fibre cement wall to something like a battened out cavity cement clad wall, we would need to add the air gap between the fibre cement sheet and the insulation options for that assembly. So this air gap would typically be inserted as a base material option as you would want that air gap applied regardless of what R value insulation bat you select for that wall within the wall data grid as you optimise your model and run simulations.